we come together as a holy people to celebrate the gift of the Eucharist on this fourth Sunday in the time of Lent. Our gospel will invite us to move to being able to see. Jesus had that power to cure the blind man. He has the power to give us new sight. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. As a holy people, let us come together and ask God to remind us for the times that we are blind, for the times that we have looked away from those in need, so we may enter more deeply into his forgiving compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to cure the blind. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us in prayer and devotion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we begin this liturgy of the Word. Our first reading comes from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. And Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice. Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before me. The Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees as God sees, as man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. And Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all of the sons that you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was brought in, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. And Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Our response today The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verdant pastures, he gives me repose. 
Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. You are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awaken, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time we now have the proclamation of the gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and walked, and came back, able to see. His neighbors, and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar, said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. But he said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him, How was he able to see? He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I walked, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, 
because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You who are born totally in sin, are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus had heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. man once blind is cured by the Lord Jesus and now he can see a lot is said about sight a lot is said about what we look at and what we see and does what we see invite us to believe Sight has always been a great dimension of my spiritual journey, having now four corneal transplants, two in each eye. And I've come to realize in my spiritual journey that there's a difference between being able to see with my body, with my eyes, and being able to see from a different place. My spiritual journey, my emptiness, my brokenness. On this day, I come before you in an empty church. And it would be easy for me to look out and just look at an empty church. But that isn't what I see. I see a faith-filled flock. Not being able to be here and making a tough decision not to be here, but by doing so, sacrificing and doing the right thing. I see a faith that is growing, that when the doors are reopened, no wall and no roof will be able to hold on to the faith that will flourish. A time of blindness and moving to light, to being able to see. We're told in Scripture that as we see is not how God sees. And we're invited this day to draw closer to this Jesus who had the power to cure, to bring a person from blindness to sight. He's inviting us today to move from blindness to sight, not the sight of our eyes, the sight of our souls. How do we get there? As a young priest, meditating on the crucifixion of Christ, I pen some words that I go back to often. When Jesus was on the cross, his hands nailed, his feet nailed, not being able to move, He saw the sinfulness of the world through those wounds and through that passion. 
his sacrifice in that moment, able to see that by this action, through his wounds, we would have eternal life. Our sins would be forgiven. When our wounds become our eyes, when our emptiness becomes our eyes, then we see. I go back to that a lot. When our wounds become our eyes, we see. Today, we have to move to a new place of sight. Not seeing the emptiness of churches, not seeing what we can't do, but what we are doing. Loving one another, taking care of one another, being present to one another. When the emptiness of our lives become our eyes, we connect to this Jesus and we can see. We ask the Lord to remove our blindness that we may see with our souls. As a Hopi people of God, let us now proclaim our common belief, the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a holy people of God united in faith, we now offer our prayers, the universal prayers, for our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that may God keep us faithful to all of his commandments, that we may grow in the fullness of truth and move from blindness to sight, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, that the Lord may grant them fortitude in this time of need, that they may put aside differences and work for the common good. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer, especially blindness, that the healing power of Jesus may be with them and bring, their com bring them comfort and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, that through the mercy of God they may find the restful and peaceful peace which only God can give, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you strengthen us and nourish us on this day. Guide us on this journey, that we may always see with our brokenness and our woundedness the glory that you have in store. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, for the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Great brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that they may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness to the radiance of the true faith, and has brought those born in the slavery of ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration, and we too, with all the hosts of heaven, cry out without end, as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless in Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake was handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit. That they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. But when about to give his life to set us free, and he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands and confessing your mercy. gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of you. The mystery of faith 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until he comes again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, this sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, with Daniel, our Bishop, with Richard, our Apostolic Administrator, and all bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now to the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us together with them in the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us take a moment to share peace with those who surround us. The Lord was recognized in the breaking of bread. May we recognize him here as we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Keep me safe to eternal life.
now as we come to this final moment of our celebration, we gather once more in prayer. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the Lord send you forth with his blessings, those of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.